Good morning, I'm Lauren Hayes for the Finance News Network. I hope you enjoyed your weekend. Stocks rallied Friday but finished the week lower as investors drew conflicting conclusions about what the latest payroll numbers will mean for future Federal Reserve rate hikes. October's non-farm payrolls report left investors divided, fueling some concern that the Fed will persist with its hiking campaign since the labour market added 261,000 jobs. Others interpreted the findings as a sign that the labour market is beginning to cool, albeit at a slow pace since the unemployment rate rose to 3.7 per cent. Looking ahead to this week, US earnings for the September quarter will slow this week. 86% of S&P 500 companies have already reported. Of that figure, only 70% of those reporting so far are ahead of expectations, which is well below the norm of around 76%. Thursday, we will have the US CPI report, with investors also looking ahead to next week's midterm elections. The Dow Jones Industrial Average gained 1.3 per cent, the S&P 500 advanced 1.4 per cent, and the Nasdaq rose 1.3 per cent. All the major averages capped off the week with losses. The Dow shed 1.4 per cent, ending four weeks of gains. The S&P and Nasdaq fell 3.4 per cent and 5.7 per cent, respectively, to break two-week winning streaks. In other news, hopes of a reopening in China pushed shares of US-listed Chinese stocks higher Friday, although the government hasn't formally announced a pivot. The market action provided a grim irony for China. A month short of three years after the coronavirus was first detected in central China, daily cases hit a six-month high on Friday. In company news, Warren Buffett's Berkshire Hathaway revealed a 20% rise in operating profit for the third quarter, but also more than US $13 billion in losses, as the value of his company's huge investment portfolio was hit hard in the quarter's big market sell-off. That said, Berkshire's shares have outperformed the broader market this year, with the Class A shares dropping around 4% versus the S&P 500's 20% decline. Kavana, the online used car retailer that surged during the pandemic, suffered its worst day ever on Friday. Kavana's plunge of more than 95% this year makes it a prime example of COVID darlings that were caught flat-footed when the macroeconomic environment deteriorated and pandemic trends, like huge demand for used cars, snapped back to normal. And Twitter, under Musk's new ownership, has sacked half of its staff as the world's richest man tries to manage the US $20 billion in debt he has taken out to buy Twitter. Across the sectors, materials were the standout as the possibility of China easing COVID restrictions saw commodity prices rally strongly. On the currency front, the dollar index was down 1.9% and one Australian dollar strengthened compared to the US dollar on Friday, buying 64.12 US cents. Now to commodities, iron ore futures are pointing to a 4% gain. Gold added 2.8%, silver jumped almost 7%, copper gained 7.6% and oil advanced 5%. The SPY futures are pointing to a 1.3% gain today. With the clocks changing in the US over the weekend, the markets now close an hour later, so our morning report will follow. I'm Lauren Hayes. Have a great day.